مساء الخير احنا بنشكر استاذ دكتور سامح على دعوته الكريمه لينا في المؤتمر الناجح ده وان شاء الله كل عام يكون انجح وانجح ان شاء الله مع معانا استاذ دكتوره منى الغمراوي يعني اتكلم على الاير ديفيشنسي نيو انسايتس اتفضل يا حضرتك قبل ما نشغل التايمر طبعا ميرسي جدا لتقديم حضرتك وبشكر الدكتور سامح توفيق على دعوتي للمؤتمر الحقيقه it's the first my first time وI'm honored to be among all those in the endocrinologists الحقيقه and it will be quite tempting to to speak about iron deficiency after these delicious talks or after such a great presenter Dr. Rasha uh, I would like to thank all Sadal Hodur for keeping up with us لغايه uh, دلوقتي I try to be uh, concise بس الحقيقه التوبك was supposed to be given uh, more time uh, I'm talking today about iron deficiency أنا أستاذ طب الأطفال وأمراض الدم في كلية طب القصر العيني. These are my disclosures and uh, this uh, presentation is not intended to promote any pharmaceutical compounds or any medications. Uh, my outline will be briefly why iron deficiency and how iron is maintained and regulated in our bodies. When does uh, iron deficiency occur and, if, and when it occurs, how we can manage these patients? Well, here, very recently, there have been a lot of updates uh, and new insights uh, in the iron metabolism, which is um, um, yani led um, um, to call this era the golden era of iron nowadays. So why iron deficiency? Very briefly, if we look to the WHO uh, data, 2 billion uh, all over the world, more than 30% of the world population uh, are affected by iron deficiency anemia, quite striking figures, and not to mention the iron deficiency only, which is even more uh, prevalent, no definite registry, but it is uh, postulated that it's about twice iron deficiency anemia, so it's the most common single nutrient deficiency, well, although these data were uh, in 2011, what about 2021? Still very high figures. And let me say that 60% in the African region of children having uh, iron deficiency anemia, the same in the pediatric age group. So uh, these are very striking figures as a major health problem worldwide. Uh, this study uh, in uh, Cairo University Children Hospital a few years ago, let me say that among 600 children, the incidence of uh, iron deficiency anemia or 64%. This is very high. And uh, still, the registry of the MOH in Egypt states the iron deficiency anemia accounts for 58% among pediatric patients. Of course, we know we have two prevalence peaks, as we know, with the late infancy and the adolescence. I am trying to be any uh, kida. Iron deficiency versus iron deficiency anemia. And this is the main um, um, aim of my talk. Are they synonymous? Of course, the, the answer is no. And unfortunately, we we are still dealing only with iron deficiency anemia, and we're not targeting the iron deficiency at all. Iron deficiency is decreased iron, but uh, be beyond the capability to maintain the functions of the body, but with a normal hemoglobin. So very commonly, you can have a patient with normal hemoglobin, and yet he has evidence of iron deficiency, which is very commonly overlooked with a low MCV, with hypochromia, and with increased RDW, and still this patient is not recognized. Whereas the iron deficiency anemia, of course, already has become symptomatizing. مش محتاجة أقول the definition of anemia according to the WHO. But is it important to recognize iron deficiency before even iron deficiency anemia? Let us say, definitely, it has very serious functional implications, especially on the motor and mental development of children. And they have found that, that infants who were exposed to iron deficiency, even during pregnancy, are very much affected in, regarding their motor development, their uh, cognitive functions, their auditory responses, and even these changes might not be reversible even if the iron is corrected later on along the stages of development. Of course, it is associated with poor quality of life, maternal and infant mortality, a higher rate, especially with severe anemia. Well, in the last EHA European Hematology Association meeting just a few months ago, there was a complete session about the fundamental role of cellular iron on different physiological processes in the body, addressing mostly local iron deficiency in tissues, especially with the cells which have high 
energy demand, the cardiac myocytes and its effect on contractility, the renal tubular cells and its effect on the renal tubular absorption, the skeletal muscles, the brain cells as well, and as well as on other cells with high mitogenic activities, the blood cells or the erythropoietic cells, as well as the immune system. Well, here they, they raise so many questions about this regarding what are the implications of this local tissue iron deficiency? When should we start to intervene? What kind of markers that can we use to, to check for this local tissue iron deficiency? Which iron compounds that can we use and which mechanisms that we can target to ameliorate or to correct this iron deficiency? It was a very interesting topic. We are seeing uh, effect of iron deficiency even without anemia, especially if anemia can cardiology or anemia heart failure or anemia chronic diseases, even without anemia. No need to mention Arfina recommended daily allowance, the estimated daily requirements. We know that the milk is not a good source of iron, and yet the human milk is a is high source, um, um, uh, better bioavailability. Well, despite all this, it is a highly prevalent problem with significant implication, new concepts, and preventable. Well, we are addressing the iron deficiency. How the iron is maintained? Unfortunately, we do not have any mechanisms which can control the excretion of iron in the body. And the iron metabolism is very um, um, uh, restrictive to maintain the total body iron and to supply the 20 to 25 milligram of iron daily in the erythropoiesis. And unfortunately, this is only maintained by the iron recycling, which is released from the macrophages, not primarily on the absorption. And on the other hand, the iron absorption is very finely tuned to maintain the iron absorption to be equivalent to the daily iron, which is shed out from the intestinal mucosa, the one to two milligrams absorbed or they are excreted. And the master of this regulation is the hepcidin, and there has been a revolution in the understanding of the iron metabolism over the last few years attributed to the hepcidin for reporting excess. The hepcidin is a hormone secreted by the hepatocytes. We control the ferroportin, which is the only exporter of iron from the intestinal cells or from the macrophages. And this hepcidin is responsible for the regulation of this process. So the iron homeostasis is regulated at the site of absorption, utilization, and cycling. We are seeing the iron absorption by all the complicated pathways of the absorption of the heme and the non-heme iron. And it remains to be the sole mechanism that regulates the iron, uh, uh, the iron stores in the body physiologically. So what about the hepcidin? It is affected by so many factors, both physiological and pathological. And I want here to highlight in the whole, it is affected by the anemia, low iron stores, which are which is one of the main determinants. The other determinant is the erythropoietic activity or the erythropoietic drive. And the third is inflammation. And the inflammation stimulates the hepcidin, and this causes what we call block of the uh, or inhibition of the ferroportin, or sequestration of iron in the macrophages of these cells. So when does iron deficiency happen? Again, this was very much raised in the last EHA meeting, the difference between the absolute iron deficiency and the functional iron deficiency. Absolute iron deficiency, there is decrease in the stores as well as in the serum iron, whereas the functional, you have low serum iron, but you have blocked uh, release of iron from the stores, preserved iron stores, natigital hepcidin zayma This one is related to the increased needs and increased um, 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 uh, loss or due to decreased supply and decreased absorption. Whereas the functional, it is a state of chronic inflammation with irrespective of the cause through the release of interleukin-6 and the stimulation of l hepcidin Well, understanding this pathophysiology, l is the key for new insights in different ways of administering iron in these populations, but unfortunately, sometimes both coexist in the same patient. These chronic conditions, they have both absolute and functional iron deficiency, autoimmune disease, inflammatory bowel disease, critically ill patient in PQ, ill cancer patients, and even in obesity. 
I'm not going to go through the established causes اللي طبعا حضراتكم كلكم عارفينها starting by the hookworm infestations للأسف they are still very common in our population now with modern style uh, of living the vegans and the vegetarians are more at risk الحاجات اللي مهمة قوي don't forget celiac disease any female with heavy menses you should always investigate for an underlying coagulation defect with zetal platelet dysfunctions and the von Willi brand which are very commonly overlooked and the patients are not diagnosed يمكن أحيانا على ترابيس العمليات في وقت الولادة and the PNH remains to be a very rare course and of course the refractory iron deficiency or IREDA اللي احنا هنتطرق لها دلوقتي كلمة على cow's milk allergy it's over diagnosed nowadays but you should also consider it for any hala with progressive or rapidly progressive or severe iron deficiency with positive occult blood or recurring even after treatment with oral iron therapy well, of course a definite uh, diagnosis diagnosis is the improvement after elimination from diet but I'll hear back to this I want to uh, stress in even a severe iron deficiency by itself without cow's milk allergy can cause what we call leaky gut syndrome or what we call exudative entropathy and can lead to positive occult blood in stools as well. These are the stages of iron deficiency in the back of our mind we, when we are treating our patients, starting by the depletion of the iron stores, then the iron deficiency alone, and then finally the iron deficiency anemia. طبعا كلنا عارفين الابيثيليال سيمتومز بتاعه الايرن ديفيشنسي بس ذيس ار كوايت ليت اند يوزوالي دو نوت ابير اكسبت ان لونج ستاندينج كيسز الواتس تشالنجينج از ذا موست كومن سيمتومز ار ذا كوجنيتيف ذا بيهافيور سيمتومز اند موست امبورتنتلي از ذا فاتيج اوف كورس ذا بايكا اند ذا بريث هولدينج سبيلز كول فور ايرن اسسمنت او ايرن بروفايل اسسمنت ايميديتلي سو هاو كان يو مانج اي عيان وذ ايرن ديفيشنسي انيميا بس بروبابلي انا هحتاج يعني five minutes بس extra. This is the roadmap initial approach. Please remember that iron deficiency anemia is not common presentation in the ER. So whenever you have a patient presenting in the ER with microcytic hypochromic anemia, this patient should be very thoroughly assessed. First, for the signs of decompensation, because usually cases of isolated iron deficiency anemia are very well compensated, even with very low hemoglobin levels due to the chronicity, you have to exclude high-risk potential signs, lymphadenopathy, hepatosplenomegaly. Very recently, we diagnosed a female patient uh, 10 years old, who was just presenting with microcytic hypochromic anemia and proved to be metastatic neuroblastoma. So you should not overlook these potential signs, ongoing blood loss and associated comorbidities. I always have to mention the chronic kidney disease. Can we web? Any patient presenting in childhood with microcytic hypochromic anemia might be the first presentation for chronic renal failure. If all these signs are not available, then you can take a detailed history, very importantly, the nutritional history and the family history as well, and the response to therapy. The response to therapy is very important. One of the main problems that we're facing as hematologists is that the patient is moving from one physician to the other or from one pediatrician to the other and only changing the formulations and the preparations with no response whatsoever. Then the physical examination, the classic uh, uh, patient with iron deficiency anemia is a doing well child with no other manifestations. So we have any abnormalities in growth, uh, uh, abnormal features, hepatospinomegaly, whatever, then he needs very thorough investigation. And then we should look to the lab evidence of iron deficiency, investigate the cause and comorbidities is very important, manage and monitor. Well, this is the very classic blood film examination of iron deficiency anemia with anisocytosis and hypochromia being early presented. In Amma, however, LSF is not usually that classic. Sometimes you can have a dimorphic blood film with both both microcytic and macrocytic cells. That can be achieved mixed deficiencies, recent uh, uh, initiation of iron therapy or transfusion. Not just like that. This figure, the figure classically uh, summarizes all the iron parameters that can be used to assess the iron. Unfortunately, we do not do except serum ferritin, or even you can sometimes well, have the transferrin saturation. And from this, you can see that the serum ferritin, in absence of inflammation or infection, remains to be the gold or the most sensitive parameter that can detect as early as the depleted iron stores. Or pathognomonically, if it's, the, it's less than 12, this is pathognomonic of iron deficiency anemia alone in a stable patient. The most reliable is the adequate hemoglobin response after adequate trial of iron therapy. In classic, look at the hemoglobin, the MCV, 
please look to the red blood cell count. We are overlooking a lot of thalassemia carrier patients because we are not looking to the red blood cell count. In classic iron deficiency anemia, it should be uh, proportionately decreased in proportion to the hemoglobin. Well, that is not the case in cases of thalassemia traits, whether beta or alpha thalassemia. Of course, the RDW and the Mentzer index, again, this is the classical findings of iron deficiency anemia, but no single test can detect iron, uh, iron status of these patients. And you, so you usually have to have a combination of tests. When we look to this table, it illustrates all the differential diagnosis of different stages of iron deficiency. You look to the serum ferritin, is this pathognomonic? If it's less than 30, it's less than 12. This is pathognomonic of iron deficiency anemia. But unfortunately, in inflammatory states or infections, it can rise above 100, the halatal chronic kidney disease, and even above 200. The transferrin saturation, very sensitive. Please ask for serum iron and total iron binding capacity. No one is relying on serum iron anymore. It has a diurnal variation, a fraction by diet, it can uh, be low with infections. So please do not rely on iron alone. El Haya two markers come in, El Hepcidin, which is available, but unfortunately not standardized between different labs. It is elevated characteristically in the IRIDA and in the anemia of chronic inflammation. Well, two markers, dole, El Homa soluble transferrin receptor, will soluble transferrin receptor to the log ferritin. They are not in, uh, available widely in practice. Lanama al they are very highly suggestive and can help to differentiate with that iron deficiency anemia from the anemia of chronic disease. So back to this figure for absolute iron deficiency, serum ferritin will be enough. But for anemia of chronic disease or for functional immune deficiency, you have to rely on the transferrin saturation. Well, transferrin saturation is below 20 together with the serum ferritin above 100 or even 200. This can diagnose functional iron deficiency. You have definitely to investigate the cause. Please, please, occult blood in stools, kidney functions are mandatory, stool examination, chest x-ray. If we are suspecting pulmonary hemocidrosis, we, have, yeah, we had one. And of course, the genetic mutation for IREDA. The goal settings for the treatment is primarily the prevention, not the treatment. And if the treatment, then it should be a timely treatment. Kulin Arfinal prevention or recommendations of, of WHO with American Academy for supplementation of iron, but a lot of barriers related to the awareness awareness, lack of awareness, the poor compliance, and the cost. And this is the core of the treatment of iron deficiency anemia, not only iron supplementation, what kind of iron replacement therapy? A lot of debate is going not only between different oral formulations. In Amakaman, there is a debate about the oral versus the IV iron therapy. And Lil Asaf, none is by far the ideal treatment, mostly related to tolerability with that oral preparations. Safety issues will bad soma uh, IV iron with infusion reaction, and both have benefits and limits. Back to the figure of the hepcidin. The hepcidin has allowed us to revisit or to revise all our standards for measurement. The oral iron and the IV iron are absorbed in so different ways. The oral iron and the non-heme pathway exactly. So it needs a, 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 an integrity of the mucosa. It in, needs an optimum pH. And more and more, it needs an optimum hepcidin level because even with the slightest infection or inflammation, the hepcidin will increase and block the ferroportin. It will block the iron absorption. On the other hand, the IV iron is already absorbed on the macrophages directly. And this was the basis for IV iron for il, il, uh, il functional iron deficiency. A lot of iron uh, preparations are available. It remains to be the first and the most effective and the easy option in mild and moderate cases, but only in stable cases. We all know who absorbed through the non-heme iron. The daily oral iron was found in two studies that it stimulates the hepcidin, the drug that will block the ferroportin and block the iron absorption on the next day. And here, a recommendation in alternate dosing, will even a low dose of iron might be more effective and more uh, tolerated rather than the daily dose or the high doses. Well, several divalent um, iron salts are available. Most of the guidelines we recommend the ferrous sulfate. The aim is to normalize the hemoglobin, but not only, but also to replenish the iron stores. And according to some guidelines, in an outside light serum ferritin of 100. A complex market scenario, million marka fessu. The most important, you have to check the elemental iron according to all guidelines. In SF, it is variable by countries, by, uh, by products. 
وكل واحد فيه ديفرنت ان جنرال افر السلفيت فيه 20% مش هتكلم على اللي احنا عارفينه كله ال 3 تو 6 والديوريشن اوف 3 تو 6 مانث او او الريليشن تو دايت بس وات از امبورتنت ان الهاي دوز از نوت ريكومندد بيكوز كده كده الماكسيمم ابزوربشن بتاعي is 10 to 20% of the amount which is present in high preparations and any un, uh, free unabsorbed iron will increase the ROS or the oxidative damage of the intestinal mucosa and increase the GIT side effects. There is concern now about the change in the gut microbiota with uh, the use of iron preparations and the induction of inflammation and diarrhea as well. عشان كده بقى فيه a lot of new preparations. واحد من اللي promising اللي هو sucrosomial which is a form of ferric pyrophosphate coated with phospholipids and glucose and others like ferric maltol and a lot of preparations in the moment in the soup aiming to uh, nanoparticles aiming to bypass this non-heme pathway of absorption into uh, uh, direct absorption on the real endocytosis. So one, when you have managed with uh, challenges or faced with challenges due to adverse events or poor compliance or long treatment, this is known as failure of treatment. And what should you do when there is failure of response? Hmm. Please refer to a hematologist. Call the iron deficiency anemia, ma ben shofesh. Lil asab. Because you have to assess for refractoriness, which is defined by failure of increase of the hemoglobin by more than one gram after four weeks of oral iron therapy, of course, of adherent therapy. Maximum six weeks. And this refractoriness may be apparent due to suboptimal dosing or poor adherence, or may be truly due to GIT uh, malabsorptive causes, may be due to high hepcidin, the anemia of chronic disease, or amuman inflammatory conditions, or the inherited IRIDA or the refractory inherited iron deficiency, or of course due to misdiagnosis and wrong diagnosis from the beginning. We see patients going on iron therapy for months and months, even without having iron study or iron profile done in the first place. Type. What is the IRIDA? It is an inherited form, very uh, uh, irresponsive to oral iron, characteristically very low uh, uh, MCV ve uh, in proportion to the degree of anemia with characteristically high hepcidin. You should always suspect it in any case who is not respo uh, 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 responding to oral iron. And of course, if you have refractiveness, Revise again the differential diagnosis of microcytic hypochromic anemia, including sideroblastic, will inherited high iron overload, the like atransferenemia or hypotransferenemia. Well, again, exclude alpha or beta thalassemia co inheritance. Well, in the case of they can both coexist. Iron deficiency is not a thalassemia carrier. And sometimes this is a dilemma for diagnosis. El IV iron indications for the lead EA are very um, uh, well known, the classic indications, but the new indications and the expanding spectrum that we are seeing now with, uh, is recommended with the use of el IV iron even as a first line, is in any state of chronic inflammation, the inflammatory bowel disease, the chronic kidney, the halat anemia heart failure, and even for prevention in every, in any regularly bleeding child, the ayanin coagulation disorder. And so the new is that they are expanding the spectrum of the clinical use of IV iron, even as first line. Only because both be stimulate the hepcidin, but unfortunately, the ferroportin expressed in the macrophages is much higher than the ferroportin expressed in the intestinal mucosal cells. So low-grade inflammation will block the enterocyte ferroportin expression, but not the macrophage expression. Major advances has led to IV preparation. As soon as the infusion reaction is no longer with the high stability of these compounds, the new one, because it allows to give a total replacement only in one or two infusions maximum. Less side effects, less infusion reactions. We allow the infusion reactions, the mild one in every 200, will even a severe one in 200,000, which is less than the risk of even reactions which happens with. Blood transfusion. This is a lot of new preparations or loma already available. Usually, you don't find except the cosmofer, but it has to be calculated by the Ganzoni formula to target the hemoglobin with a lots of benefits. Red cell transfusion, we are very reluctant to transfuse a patient for iron deficiency anemia. Please, please, please consider this before giving the patient, especially if he is well compensated. 
I think in, it's time to consider the, our traditional way of giving iron with all these advances in the understanding of the hepcid and ferroportin pathway. Well, there is a lot even more coming with uh, advances in the pharmaceutical technology. We see clinical trials ongoing on the hepcid agonist with the hepcid antagonist. The hepcid antagonists are targeting the anemia of chronic disease, whereas the hepcid or the mini hepcidins are mostly in the trials of thalassemia and other hemoglobin. Purposes. My take home message, iron deficiency is a highly prevalent, but yet a preventable uh, condition. They are not the same and should be both early recognized and managed. Iron deficiency, even without anemia, can have long-term side effects. Routine screening of uh, patients at the age of 12 months is mandatory. Diagnostic workup should also include investigation of underlying cause and comorbidity. Serum ferritin alone may be sufficient only if the patient is stable enough with no other signs of infection or inflammation, but transfer and saturation will be more reliable. It's important to replenish the iron stores. Refractoriness should always be uh, warrant for, uh, or should always warrant re-evaluation and reassessment of your patient. And lastly, discovery of the hepcidin for ferroportin pathway has represented a turning point in the knowledge of iron metabolism and has allowed us to revise all our rationale in the proper use of uh, current available preparations for iron therapy, including the alternate dosing, the lower dose, as well as the early introduction of IV iron in cases of inflammation. Thank you. I thank you. 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 ودي الحقيقه احنا حاطينها كمان في بروتوكول المبادره واضحه جدا بعد شهر اتاكد بس ان هو خد الايرن اتاكد من الكومبلاينت اتاكد ان مفيش باراسيتيز ولا بيديكيولوزيس وبعد كده احول الهيماتولوجيست ثانك يو